Mike Ybarra, who used to be the president of Blizzard, suggested that players should be tipping whenever you finish the game because it was that good. So we're going to be discussing the ex-president of Blizzard, Mike Ybarra, which is uh, coming up with a hot take. And Mikey here says that uh, he thought about this idea for a while, and as a player, since I've been diving into single-player games lately, uh, there are just some that leave him in awe of how... Valenzal says, uh, I'm not going to lie, I, think this is, I don't think this is a hot take. Nobody's going to do it, but who cares? You're completely right. My opinion on this, I'll stop right now. It's 20 seconds into the video. I'm going to give you my opinion. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's the timing and who it's from and what, what they're saying that's the problem. It's like if Microsoft Flight Simulator brought out an update to New York City on 9-11. It's not that it's a bad idea, but man, on of all the things and all the days and all the places to fucking do it, it didn't need to be this one. And that's the way this one feels. It's exactly it's the wrong place from the at the wrong time from the wrong guy it's not completely crazy but goddamn people don't want to hear it from the guy from blizzard amazing the experience was and at this point i'm a little bit bewildered it's like mikey share with the class please what <laughs> single player games are you playing that are so amazing because i can't find anything enjoyable oh come on bro like what about elden ring Dragon's Dogma 2. I've, there's a lot of games that are great. And ironically, like, in the last couple of years, no video game that came out is something that I would consider mind-blowing. I mean, somewhat entertaining, sure, but, like, nothing out of the ordinary. Well, it could be a difference in opinion. Baldur's Gate 3, uh, you know, Elden Ring, that definitely hits it for me. And apparently he's opinion. talking about Horizon Zero Dawn. Who cares? Like, really, Mikey, we, we need to get the time machine to go back all the way to Horizon Zero Dawn, and this is what you would consider an amazing game? Big yikes, your standards are low. I, I No, ironically, I would think that when Blizzard was releasing games back in the day, like Warcraft 3, even StarCraft 2, like, those were mind-blowing games. They were that, crazy, you know, people bro. people from around the world would know about. Like, it, I tell you, like, it, you just had to be there. Whenever they showed that Warcraft 3 cinematic, that shit was like. It was like the equivalent quality of like Lord of the Rings for like games. Like you can go back now and watch Lord of the Rings and it still doesn't look like shit. It aged better than like anything has. Like there's movies from 10 years ago that aged worse than Lord of the Rings. Warcraft 3 was like that. The cinematics were next fucking level. So Zero Dawn is in just 2000. a glorified Assassin's Creed type of game. It's, it's not what, that original. It's not, not worthy of the praise that you're giving it. Uh, but anyway, right. Uh, Elder Ring, I would say. Yes. Okay. There it is. Okay. God of War, meh. Never played I, it. I guess like tastes are subjective. Played the but first again, and like, second the game, that's it. it up, I'm like, well, the ex-president of Blizzard is hyping up games. What is he talking about? And then he yeah. talks about the most commercial meh type of games that there are. Uh, he says that, uh, I wish I could give these folks another $10 or $20 because it was worth more than my initial 70 Jesus Christ, Mikey, you're wealthy. You're very rich. <laughs> look, 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 look. You work at the top of Blizzard, right? Things are pretty good for you, right? I mean, but, like, here's the thing. Is that, like, I did that. So I played a game called Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I really liked the game, and I enjoyed the game a lot. And whenever I finished the game, or I hit a plateau on the game, I enjoyed it so much, I actually got, I got this little thing right here. We got Vern. And I bought this little thing, and this is the way that you support the games. You just buy the merch. And so I got this little stuffed animal. It's very nice, worst character. Yeah, and I bought the product. I did. And now I have it, and it's on my desk here. And he sits here, right, right here, every day. And so there is already a way to do this. And also, like, a lot of these, a lot of the games that really need it, right? Like a, a studio, like a, the guys that make Blasphemous, right? Or the guys that make um, Halls of Torment, something like that. 
like a lot of them have places to donate into the game because it's an ongoing development project and it's a very very indie indie game hall cure is another i don't know if the hall cure is an example or not but uh, i don't think you can buy anything because of the ip stuff but anyway point aside uh is that you already have this in a lot of games already and it's buying merch challenge you mikey if you're listening to this, let's be friends. I want to be your friend, Mike, if you're this uh, this wealthy. You got to borrow some money? I want to be your friend. Let, let, let's talk. Let's get together. Let, let's talk about video games. Holy shit, look. He, he's already giving 70 bucks and he has $20 extra. My God, these Americans. He can almost afford Star Wars Outlaws. They're rich, aren't they? Uh... He then goes on and says, I know most will dislike the idea, but I realize we are almost. tired of the tipping and everything else. But I view this uh, different from a pressure to tip type scenario. Okay. Um, I would uh, prefer we have the reverse. He's right, by the way. Mikey Barra is right. Uh, it is different because there's not the social pressure of tipping. By the way, instead of tipping, I would like uh, for a system that I could take money away from them. I okay. Now we're talking. So yeah, it's like, I, I like you know. I thought about this for a while. PvP. Like I should be able to bill Blizzard for every second I sit in CC, because like I pay fifteen dollars a month to play the game. Can I play the game? No, I can't. So like if I get polymorphed, I want two cents. If I get kidney shot for five seconds, I want one cent, and that adds up. Yeah, I, I want this prorated, and I want my money back. This is ridiculous. The Unity... Wait, Mr. Pandaria comes out again? I'm going to get my whole sub feedback. Engine how had a that brilliant was? idea. That oh. Developers would have to pay more money to Unity based on installs. See, I love that idea because I could create a program uh, that, that would virtual, install the yeah. game on a loop. Yeah. And if the developer does something to piss this me off, so I just ratty. fucking install his game yeah. out of spite. You, you insert a, a man jaw on back. a female character... 10,000 installs. They what, what, you what, what, what? You jaw on a female and install his game out of spite. You, you insert a, a man jaw on a female character. Manja? 10,000 installs. You shit on the community. 1 million installs. <laughs> you hire Man a jaw. Like Mary Jane in Star Wars. Oh, in, in not Star Wars. In Star, uh, Spider, Spider Boy. Spider Man. Yeah, there you go. Oh my god, of course. Mary Jane Manjaw. Got it. Racist community manager, or you decide to contract Sweet Baby. 10 million installs. <laughs> I would fix the game industry like that. that it, it would be so good. <laughs> the hero we need, not the one that we deserve. So good. God. But all jokes aside, though, we, we can already tip. What are you talking about? Yeah. If you like Elder Ring so much, buy the Deluxe Edition. Yeah. If you like uh, God of War so much, buy, buy the, the Deluxe Edition. Now, I, I got to say, you know, these companies, especially the Western companies nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, they, they like to gimp themselves instead of making like an attractive female character like Stellar Blade and then selling merchandise based on the character the so you can support the company that way by purchasing the merchandise. Mm -hmm. uh, no one wants to buy the female character from Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, I, I personally haven't seen people using her as an avatar. I, I haven't seen people purchasing action figures of her. I'm pretty sure there must be, like, some t-shirts here and there. But, like, they, they're not that popular. See, God of War Kratos actually works. Like, I have seen yeah, Kratos cool. action figures and people having Kratos yeah. on their t-shirts. Because Kratos actually looks good. But when I don't know if Horizon Zero... Like, I... Horizon is like one of those games that I'm trying to think of like another. It's like Imagine Dragons, you know, the the band. Everybody likes it and I don't. Not everyone likes it. Oh, OK. You guys are individual, cool, free thinkers like I am. That's great. We're all free thinkers together individually, but together. I don't know, man. Like, I've just never found anything about that game to be particularly appealing comes to female characters, they don't make female characters It's a gray colored, normy, boring IP. Yeah, yeah, so therefore the merchandise too. doesn't sell. But my point is, if you want to tip developers, convince your fellow AAA game devs to start making female characters that look like the Night Elves of Blizzard. True. There were many statuettes with no, Blizzard Night Elves no, and Dragon no, Aspect. No, Drain Eye. The Drain Eye. I think the Drain Eye are better. They're way hotter. But I'll settle for Night Elves. 
Just please no orcs. And all of or Torin. Or Worgen. So anyway, right, like if, if you for some reason, Volpira. for some bizarre reason want to tip AAA companies that already charge you $70 for a game... You do have the options. Like, there is the deluxe edition. You buy and the merch. Of course, some of them, even though they, they are single player only, they still have in game shops where you can purchase stuff. So, so yeah, if you're. Yeah, buy a uh, fairy stone and Dragon's Dogma that too. I'm concerned with your money if you're like some Muslim sheik that has oil in his backyard <laughs> that is selling it to the Americans, or if you are uh, Mikey Barra and, and you're swimming in wealth, uh, mm -hmm. that those options are available to you. However, if you want to support... If you're a normal person, just buy the fucking game, play the game, tell your friends about the game, and you're doing way more than what the company could ever hope or expect from you. If you do that, you are a good boy. Indie developers, which are some of the people that I generally think do need supporting, uh, most of them, as far as I know, do sell art books of their games. They do. Uh, the developer... That... Uh, Elden Ring does it. Path of Exile does it. I have the art book for both of them. I think they're great. That made Helltaker, which is a free-to-play game on Steam, uh, is charging, I believe, like $5 to, to buy the art book and the soundtrack for mm -hmm. the game. So you can support them like that. Other developers do have Patreons or Kickstarters or, or various other crowdfunding options. So, uh, yeah, Mike is a little bit uh, bewildered that the community wasn't upset and, and uh, he, th they took his message on a positive note. But that is Again, it's, the, it's, the, it's from the wrong guy at the wrong time. He's not even that wrong. But at this time... Nobody wants to hear it from him. Because we've already been doing it. Like, most of the indie developers that I know who have released really good games yeah. have been rewarded by the market. And I do know that some gamers even purchase two copies or three copies of yeah. the same game and then gifting it to their friends simply because they genuinely think it's a good product. And by the way... Yeah, I think a really good example of that, like a couple examples are Pow World and Enshrouded. I think also one thing that really helps indie games grow is uh, actually streamers. Like, if you're streaming the game, like, if I make a video about a game and people like the game, it will boost the amount of people that play the game. And I love to be able to do that. I think that's so great. And it's also not me being some powerful tastemaker. I'm just simply shining a flashlight on a brick of gold i'm not making the gold i don't have the philosopher's stone i just have a flashlight and i said hey guys look at this this is a practice that should be encouraged it's uh not as popular in the west as it is in asia like japanese people do this mm -hmm. a lot with uh mangas and other things that independent artists are putting forward and they're upstarting yeah so they the, the community wants to help them yeah yeah you, but, but like usually it's the merchandise Right, so you actually get something in exchange. Um, like for instance, if you like Attack on Titan, well, you get a Mikasa T-shirt or you get a Mikasa action figure. And that, and that <laughs> way you actually support the company. Like the royalties go to the I actual can't. person that made the thing, but you also gain something in return. So I, I don't really like the idea of just like throwing money to a AAA company that does have the resources and does have the abilities to actually provide you with something in exchange. True. Uh, however, with ind independent game developers that are poor and they do not have the same resources, yeah, with them, there are ways to, to actually put money in their pockets. Again, most of them do have paid. Back whenever I didn't have any money, I had $20 in my account. I donated 15 of my $20 to Path of Exile so I could play in the closed beta. It was not a good financial decision. It was worth every penny, though. It was 2012, after Crip was playing... POE with Chris Wilson in a Skype call. I said, what the fuck is this? Is this the best game I've ever seen in my whole life? I think it might be. Patreons and they, they do have other abilities to, to collect money from crowdfunding. Um, but all in all, just, just like- Running your games? Yeah, yeah, Chris Wilson. Giving cash to AAA companies, just fucking bizarre. Not to mention like most of the developers and the artists wouldn't get that cash anyway. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. The publisher.
Yeah. So I, I, I kind of disagree with this take. Um, but let me know what you guys think. It depends and on how it works. Usually publishers take a percentage. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care. There's a video. Make sure to give it a like if you guys like the video. I, I love these videos. I, I wanted to talk about this more too anyway. There are games that I would want to, I wouldn't mind tipping them extra money. But like if they're, if I'm going to tip them extra money, can they at least send me like a t-shirt or send me like a little hat or something like that? That'd be cool. Right? Like, I mean, I'll even pay over price for it. It's okay. But like, I I would like a hat. Yeah, you're buying merch. Yeah, I'd like to buy merch or something like that. That'd be cool. PoE sends t-shirts. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I, I bought... <laughs> Again, uh, this was, uh, you know, I, I, have, I had money at the time, and so it wasn't a big deal, but I did buy one of the really big uh, supporter packs for PoE. And um, actually, in fact, I bought, I think, two or three. And so uh, whenever I did that, they sent me a bunch of stuff. And I got myself a, a hoodie and everything else. There's no downfall to letting people tip. Uh, it seems weird and cash grabby, but yes, yeah, some people would, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I mean, like, for example, like at the end of... Um, uh, I bought the five hundred dollar one last year with the hoodie and shirt. I did too. Yeah, I. <laughs> the, it was, I mean, to be fair, it wasn't five hundred dollars, guys. It was only it's only it's only four hundred and eighty. Okay, like I and and the thing is, dude. I remember one time I went to Best Buy, and like this guy working at Best Buy, he's like, "Hey, hey, I know you," and so this guy stops me and starts talking about Poe to me for like forty minutes, and I have a conversation. This dude works at Best Buy. And he was saving up the money, and he was getting the money together for him to buy a $480 supporter pack for PoE. That's how much he loved the fucking game, which was fucking crazy to me. Yeah, was the one with the Atlas hideout? I'm not sure. Yeah. And so, like, if you make a game that people love, people will give you money for it. Like, for example, like, I wouldn't mind, you know, like, the coffin of Andy and Laylee. I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, giving them five or ten dollars. I thought that shit was great. It was amazing. Which, by the way, I, 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 my dad watched me play Undertale, and he's like, "I gotta say, the one with the brother and sister was way more entertaining." Yeah, that one was way crazier. And I was like, "Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about." Oh my god, a Fallout show is good. Yeah, base and true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Undertale sucks. I thought I. I mean, I, I loved it. I, I think it's really fun. I'm gonna I'm looking forward to finishing it myself. But um, I mean, definitely, uh, Coffin of Andy and Laylee was a, a little bit more insane for sure. And uh, can we see Ubisoft's in-game pop-ups like the game support us by tipping? Yeah, that's crazy. Tip a multi-billion-dollar company. Can't wait for damage numbers in Poe two. I saw that. So Josh Drive Hayes interviewed Jonathan of Path of Exile two, and Jonathan confirmed that they're actually going to be adding in damage numbers, but they're going to be like very small and muted, like Elden Ring, which is fucking amazing. And like that's how Monster Hunter does it too, which is like I think the best way of doing it because like I think he's thinking about damage numbers in the way that like Classic WoW does them, or in the way that like a mobile game like a uh, uh, Maple Story does them, or something like that. Or even Diablo 4, but like having them be like small, tasteful numbers just so people can get like a frame of reference. I, I was actually really glad to hear like Jonathan's explanation for it and the fact that they're going to do that in PoE. You did it? Yeah, I mean, I like it. I'm happy about it for sure. I hope they make them optional though. So people who don't like them don't have to have them on. But yeah, Mike Ybarra isn't really wrong, but whenever he's the, uh, whenever he's a rich guy in the middle of um, what's kind of like, I don't even really know if we're in a recession right now. But we're just in a, a time where even if we're not in a recession, the levels of inflation and the prices of things are going up at such a rate that everybody believes that we are. So, like, I mean, we're in a recession, even if we're not technically in a recession. Like, that's my perspective. Right. So it, it, it's just crazy. The prices of things. It, it's it's so, so bad. And it's crazy, too, that, like, nobody's talking about it. I, I feel like I, I, I feel like people talk about it, but they don't really. Like, there's always, like, these amorphous, like, things that people talk about. Like, you just go somewhere and, like, look at the prices on things. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. What, what the fuck?